you can now run reports directly from the Start Center via the report list portlet. But there are some warnings, some cautions to keep in mind. Specifically, each report must have some type of limitation and there are options to ensure this so your report does not run away with resources or simply just never finish. Queries can be embedded and utilize substitution variables. So as an example, actual finish date greater than get date minus seven, get date being the SQL Server representation of today's date and time, actually the current date and time. So actual finish seven days ago. This date would be for Oracle. I forgot DB2. DB2 would just be date. Uh, but something like that, uh, some type of substitution variable that would, of course, change with time and perhaps with the user, uh, thus giving you a embeddable query that will actually change the result each time you run the report. You can also have the user get a prompt for uh, parameters at runtime. And of course, you can apply both. Uh, yeah, just in case. The thing to keep in mind, uh, particularly around dates, it's good to require at least one set of dates if you have dates as an available way to restrict the data. The report list portlet uh, itself, it's typically a narrow side portlet, uh, just will contain the report list uh, with the report name uh, itself being a hyperlink to run it. You would click on it and then you would get, of course, the parameters. Uh, if you don't have parameters, you just see the schedule section uh, with immediate defaulted. But if you're going to run something from the start center, again, it should have uh, a limitation built into the report, most likely via query embedded in the report uh, or runtime parameters or both. Now let's take a look at that in Maximo. And here we have, ah, so uh, a couple examples here, uh, the cost by system, well, you saw that uh, request page, uh, the, the parameter page come up. Uh, we'll take a look at another one, my work list. So uh, I am owner of these work orders, this report follows the same query. So when I go to run it, just says immediate, but it runs and it gives me the same set of work orders. So uh, nice part about this is it's going ahead and reading. Let's just make this a little bit bigger. So it's going ahead and re read using the substitution variable, which would typically be in this case colon user. So I'm logged into Max Admin. And it's reading the person ID from Max Admin and testing that uh, against the person ID and the owner field on the work order. Coming up with the fact that these are my work orders, hence Max Admin shown. So uh, that again is another way to contain and constrain um, what you are getting from the report, so that uh, you don't have all, I mean, this is just by work orders. You don't want all of the work orders to appear. And let's go ahead and get that back to normal size. There we go. And let's actually get back over. And we'll look at the cost by system report. There's another example. So our system is primary. Demo data, of course, is very old. So We'll go back a few years. Uh, and yeah, it's a, it's a pretty good swing, but I'm sure there's data there. Runs, opens in a new tab, and there it is. And there's our data with our, our time frame. And let's just make it a little 
easier to read. And of course, we have our hyperlinks. So we can see, looks like our boilers are most expensive. And we can drill down into the boiler. And we'll see that. Looks like main boiler is where our dollars are being spent. And we can keep going VR430 until we don't have anywhere else to, to drill down to. So uh, again, please keep in mind, put reports on the start center, that's fine, but you need to make sure you have limitations on those reports, either uh, through embedded queries, through uh, runtime parameters, or both. Thank you.